Hello there, and welcome to this developer's guide to the Windows 10 preview. I'm Andy Wigley, a technical evangelist from the UK. And I'm Jerry Nixon, also a developer evangelist here in the US. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is the developer's guide to Windows 10 Preview. Windows 10 is currently in preview. This module we're going to walk through really just getting started. If you yep. don't know a lot about the Microsoft environment, when we're done here, you will. Yeah, give you enough to get the tools and give you a quick overview of what it is uh, that you're going to get with that. In fact, let's take a look at what we are going to talk about. Uh, we're going to walk through the IDE that we use, all developers' favorite tool. That's Visual Studio. We'll also talk about Visual Studio Online, what MSDN is, and why you would want necessarily a Microsoft account. So let's get started. When it all boils down to it, this is a new version of Windows, Andy. And so Windows 10 really has at its core yeah. Windows Core. What, what is Windows Core? So, yeah, so Windows Core is this common uh, set of APIs, a common infrastructure, which gives us a, for the first time, really, a true binary compatibility across all our different platforms. So yeah, this is, Windows this is the Core has been a long time coming, too. Yes. I think it's worth pointing out that there's a lot of parts of um, Windows that through the years, different teams have been writing the same thing twice. And yeah. so they're trying to bring that together. And Windows Core, we finally reached it. Yeah. I mean, it's a decade coming. Yeah, I mean, we, we've had a lot of Windows operating systems over the years, which all obviously have a huge amount of commonality. We got, you know, we had Windows Mobile and Windows CE for uh, in, embedded, and obviously Windows yep. itself, and we had win Windows and ARM. And all of these were kind of the same, but underneath there were sort of a few differences here and there. But now with Windows Core, we've truly got that, un that unified uh, sort of heart of the div of the uh, platform that we can, with as developers, can take. Windows 8, we started talking about the. Finally, we brought the core to all the devices. So it's the Windows 8 kernel. That's what we were talking about, the kernel. And but that's not what we're talking about here. This is Windows Core. So the kernel is there. It's across all the devices, but also now are all the fundamental pieces of the operating system. And it's very small. This is a very reduced subset of all of Windows, so that we can put it on everything. Because some of these devices are really small, so you have to make sure that the core is lean and that the core is very efficient like that. So now we have a, a single kernel still, but you know now we have a single file I/O stack. We have a single app yep. mo app model and things like that. And it, it's probably fair to say that, from an engineering point of view, we've kind of not been as great as we could have been in sort of sharing code. We've had all these different stacks around. But now, yeah, we've really gone uh, the, a long way towards getting uh, one code base. And if we have different products, they are all running exactly the same code, and all dev teams are working on exactly the same code base. Maybe it'll it'll help. Windows Core. Maybe it'll help if we step back and just look at the convergence journey that we've been on. So yeah. let's just lay out the roadmap, and we can see Early on with Windows Phone 7, we started bringing everything into a Windows feel. That was really a UI work that was going on. Everything looked like Windows. Even yeah. uh, Xbox got its new dashboard, so it felt like the tile interface that we were accustomed to on phone. And so everything was coming together. And then all of a sudden, with Xbox One and with Windows 8, we started having that. Finally, we bring together that kernel, that converged kernel. So that, that was kind of interesting with Windows Phone 8, because earlier, Windows Phone 7, the core OS on that had been Windows CE, which is a superb operating system for, for you know, handheld battery powered devices. Still great for real time. It's still a superb real time operating system today. And that was the OS for Windows Phone 7. Spoken like a Windows mobile MVP. Well, I've been on the journey. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, a long time. A very happy uh, Windows handheld devices sure. developer for a long time. Yeah. But, but then, yeah, so yeah. When so, it comes together, so that from if you're not a if you're not a nerd. <laughs> it felt like the, that convergence was small, right? Because now you're like, okay, we have one kernel across all those devices, but you don't visually see anything. You don't, re you don't recognize that now we can have multi-core. Now we can do all the multitasking the same. Well, all that is invisible to the user, so it felt like a small step when really it was a pretty yeah, large engineering good. step. And it, it was what it was very much was about was getting the foundations unified. And then we've been on a journey since then. We're building on top of it. Where, and we get to where we are today with Windows 10, where we've now got not only the foundations common, but we've got the whole dev platform common as Last well. Last year's build, we talked about the convergence of the app model that allowed me to write a universal app that would be, I could target to both the phone and to Windows, but it was two separate binaries, but a single app model that I could have. But now we're at Windows 10. Windows 10 truly bringing it all together. We have this idea of, of Windows Core so that we have a single 
subset of Windows across everything, not just the kernel, but all these other pieces that enable things like universal drivers and pieces like that, as well as a universal app model. And now I could, that also, of course, means I can write and I get that single binary experience as well. Pretty powerful. It is. Um, okay, so UAP, that's what all of this is about. What does UAP stand for? Yep, the, uh, as it says, the Universal App Platform. Yeah. The Universal App Platform. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, um, you know, we say this is a collection of contracts and versions. What do we mean by that? So this is the, the way that the, this is the new platform that you as a developer are going to be building apps on top of. You're going to build apps for the UAP. And the UAP is, is built on this Windows core, the one core, and it is a set of APIs that are they're, they're at, a, at a low level, and you don't really need to know this as a developer, but at a low level they are arranged in contracts. And a contract is, you know, us, Microsoft, saying to you as an app developer, you can develop against UAP version that, and we are whatever, version 1.x, and we are going to maintain compatibility as we introduce little changes. And so we give you that back compat, compat uh, guarantee that you can take advantage of. Traditional Microsoft developers might might try and align this with .NET development so that yeah. you would target a .NET framework and you wouldn't be targeting Windows, you would just be targeting that .NET framework. Of course, we know yeah. that um, you can, the reason you don't target Windows is because this is all one Windows now, but it's not the same as, a, as .NET development because we're not talking about a new CLR, we're not talking about any runtime, we're really just talking about a set of contracts. Yep. And so this is interesting, when you look at the file structure, you can go into program files in Windows SDK, go into the UAP, ver in this case it's version 9910, open up that in Notepad and you can see what makes up the platform. So this is UAP 10, of course we're in preview right now, so who knows how that's going to end yeah, up, right? Sure, sure. But for now, the way this ends up, it, you know, 10.0.9.10, it includes these four contracts, foundation, universal, and so now I understand if I am writing an application, I write to this, and these are the guarantees that I get. Yeah. Makes sense to me, and uh, totally different for us. So now I'm targeting to the UAP, I'm not targeting to the operating system. So as long as I can trust the UAP is there, and then the, I can trust that there are systems in place to make sure UAP is available. Yeah, at various preview events, we've kind of announced that Windows is uh, more Windows as a service. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a developer targeting our Windows platform, what you're getting is uh, something that's going to be revised much more frequently than yeah. it was. So, you know, we've had major releases of Windows over the years, and uh, Windows 7 and then Windows 8 and 8.1 and now we've jumped to 10. You, you know, maybe there won't ever be a Windows 11. I, I, I don't know. Right. Because Windows as a platform is just going to evolve and going to be continually revved. And the dev platform, the UAP, revs independently of that. I mean, obviously there's... So what a nightmare for developers if they were trying to target the operating system. It's constantly yeah. changing. Which one are you going to test on? The one that was yeah. released yesterday or the one that's going to be released tomorrow? And so if it's that frequent, then you're going to have this frustration. UAP solves that by, by creating a reliable cadence. I yeah. target the UAP. That's the reliable piece that's guaranteed to me. Yeah. I like it. All right, so let's look at the syntax. This is inside the, um, the manifest. So I'll target the platform. In this case, I'm targeting Microsoft Universal. And I do two things. And so, of course, if I'm an Android developer, something like this is quite familiar yeah. to me already. Yeah. I can say the minimum version, which is typically the version that it was written on. That's usually where that begins. Is, let's say, 2.0. We know this is fictional because we haven't even gotten to 1 yet. We haven't yet. got to 1 yet. No, but let's just okay. say. Yeah. Um, so the minimum version is 2.0. And then I can say, oh, I know that things have been released. And we're up to 3.5. I've run it on 3.5, double-checked all my workflow. The application still works. So anywhere between 2 and 3.5, go ahead and run my application. So is it this Max version tested? You as a developer are kind of saying, well, you know, I've tested it and I, it works on that version. It doesn't mean it won't work on version 4 or version 5 of the UAP whenever they come along. Right. But it just means that you as a developer are giving that, that kind of guarantee, if you like, uh, to, uh, to your customers. There's still a lot of information that we don't know yet. So, for example, uh, like, could you, would it still install on a 4.0 UAP version? We have no idea, right? All of this stuff is still <laughs> in process. Yeah. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how that sort of thing sort of shakes out. Okay, so the big deal here is I can safely deploy now one binary to every device because I'm only targeting UAP. So as long as that UAP, and UAP 1 is going to be on every device. Yep. And so that's a big deal. We know we have Windows Core, but we also know we have UAP on every device. So this is slightly different from where we were with 8.1 Universal, where 
uh, we, we're targeting the same universal API set, so your code is all the same on, on the phone and on the desktop. But then you'd package, you build packages, two binary packages, you'd submit one to the Windows Phone Store and one to the Windows Store. But now we're talking just one package goes out there and runs on whichever of our device families you want it to run on. So that typically for most folks will mean they will run on the phone and it will run on, uh, on the laptop, uh, tablet, uh, PC devices as well. So there's a lot we don't know still, but we do know we're headed in a direction where that still is allowed. So if your development team does want to create separate binaries to target specific device types, that the store will have some sort of mechanism to allow you to go ahead and create those and upload those specifically to specific targets. So that's still an option. You can still create some sort of um, a family of, of uh, product inside the store, but you know we don't know what that's going to look like just yet because this is Windows 10 preview. Yep. We're still pretty early on. Yep. Okay, so that's the ST, that's the that is the UAP. We have that across all our devices. So let's think about that as the default UAP. It's a very um, tight subset, which although when you look at the API, it's pretty exhaustive. So we have all of these pieces across all of these device, different device types. And we say device types, we mean things like Xbox, phone, desktop. The uh, PPI, or maybe we're calling that now the Surface Hub. Surface Hub, the big, uh, huge 85-inch wall-mounted uh, screen stroke yeah. PC. Yeah. All the way yeah. down to IoT. IoT, yeah. Right? yeah it's that's crazy. Right. So this, yeah. this is the UAP that we can, this default UAP that we have across all the devices. But sometimes that's not enough. So let's talk just about Xbox for a second. I might want to be able to interact with um, my application with a controller, you know, you'd have that on an Xbox, no problem. And you'd have the red button and the green button and things like that that you wouldn't necessarily have on other types of devices. And we don't want to make it so that Xbox developers can't do that, but we still want to create this universal experience so that you, when you write an application that goes ahead and uses that, um, it doesn't invalidate your ability to go across all devices. So that's where extension SDKs come from. Yep. The extension SDK also in the file system, Andy. Yeah, yeah. So you've also got a manifest there. So uh, you can go in and, and dig around on that that particular manifest, and it breaks out very much the same as the UAP because these are it's structured in exactly the same way. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of API contracts you can see there. So uh, this is the phone one. So things like the wallet uh, is something a feature you'll find on phone devices, but yeah. not not on PC tablets. And um, there's a bunch of other contracts there that are specific to phone. So what these are doing, these extension SDKs, are allowing you to uh, to sort of add to light up your app on particular families of devices to uh, enable uh, bits of behavior on those that make sense on those devices. So, you know, we're, we're targeting the UAP, and the UAP is this unified API set across all our devices. And in nine, no, let's say 95% of 96. your code, 96%, Jerry says 96% of your code, guaranteed from Jerry, is going to be common across all of your devices. Yeah. But that little 4% where you want to do something a little bit different, like uh, Xbox avatar or, um, or the phone, the hardware back button on, on phone devices, we have APIs that handle that, and they, these are encapsulated in these extension SDKs. So if you want to write code to target those, then we have a special way of doing that, and we'll be showing you that a bit later on. And back to this um, S Windows SDK folder on the file system. This is, a, this is really where everything is, and uh, we jokingly call it the GAC kind of for universal yeah. apps. But that's where all of those WinMDs that enable all these different uh, SDKs are there. So you'll see the mobile SDK there. You'll see the, develop, the desktop SDK. But you'll also see a, a lot of SDKs that have nothing to do with the platform I'm developing on. And those SDKs actually exist in their fully implemented space on the Xbox, right? And so that's a, it's a really interesting thing. When I am writing to the, um, the avatar API for Xbox, let's say, or the back button API for the Windows phone, and I go down to an IoT, I, I don't have an error. It used to be we'd have this, um, this pound if to make sure that if you're using code that doesn't exist on a different device, you got to trick the compiler. Well, the reality is if you start tricking the compiler like that, you end up with multiple binaries, and that's not what we want. We want a single binary that runs on all of them, and so that's where extensions come from. We This extension SDK is fully implemented on Xbox and stubbed on all the stubbed others. Dollars. Yeah, so your code will compile as if those APIs are there, but obviously you, well, you don't want to start trying to call those Xbox APIs if you're running on an IoT device. Bad things would happen. Right. 
So, so here, here's the syntax back into the manifest here. So um, this allows me to reference um, the Windows Desktop extension SDK and the Windows Mobile extension SDK. So the Windows Mobile would be things like phone hardware that I would end up with, um, and Windows Desktop would be things specific to you know the 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 bigger version of Windows. Sure, sure. But, you know, like most of our demos, you, we probably haven't either referenced either of those. You know, you know, you only need to do that if you, I mean, there's no harm in it, to be honest. You might as well just add ref and it's, it's not going to break anything. It so. turns out, Andy, we're in Windows 10 Preview, yep. and Visual Studio is also in Preview. And so being able to add these uh, external F SDKs like this, currently... No, we can add ref. Yep. We can add ref. So. Jerry's about to say you have to manually edit the, yeah. this, this is the fast moving world we're living in here. So as of about last Tuesday, <laughs> you can now right click in Visual Studio in the project and say add ref, just the same as you do with uh, any, other, uh, any other DLL. Is that it you in the ref. list? It's in the list. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm You're so, running on old bits, I am man. so yeah, Monday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yes, so it's just an add ref. It's just another, it's just another, you see it in add ref and you see in the uh, UAP section, there's uh, extension SDKs and there they are, Windows Desktop and Windows Mobile. It's, but it was a manual edit. It's good to recently. step back and just look at the overall landscape. So let's look at this. So um, if you're an iOS developer, 